Kendo Podcast by Hiro Imafuji from kendogai.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts kendo for kendo lovers and supported by kendo enthusiasts through patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit kendogai.com for more kendo information and how to support kendogai.com. Welcome to Kendo Podcast episode 5. I think it is 5. In this episode, I would like to talk about, I would like to share my memories with you,、uh, the memories of Tsurumaru Sensei, the late Tsurumaru Juichi Sensei. When I started Kendo,、uh, I started Kendo when I was 7. He was already old. And he was a scary looking old man. That's my first impression. And if I talk about little memories, like、uh, I was sick and he was,、um, he was instructing us. He was like, he was sitting in this,、uh, he, he was sitting and right next to a Japanese taiko, Japanese drum. And he just go, Hajime! Boom! He hit the drum. And he was doing that. And I was sick, and I was sitting there. Those sick, or those、uh, observers, what do you say?、Uh, those students who don't train usually sit right next to him. I don't know why. If I think about it, I don't know why we had to sit right next to him. But we were sitting right next to him and then just watching the training. And he just,、uh, he gave us,、uh, gave the students command and he just hit the drum, and then people just go, pfft. Uh, back then, probably we had more than 100 students, like kids, there, and they just go hit the drum. And then some younger instructors were there to train, actually、uh, fix, correct those students. And anyway, I was sitting right next to him, and he was. I don't know if it, it was his kote, or probably it wasn't his kote, well, old looking kote, okay? And then it wasn't his kote then. And he was、uh, looking in kote and he was going, right? He was just bang his, bang the kote on the floor and he go, he go, <laughs> the dead cockroach came out and he go, oh, pick, pick it up and then threw it away. And then I had to do it by my hands. That was a long time ago, about 30 years ago, I guess. But anyway, so that was the memory. Uh, probably oldest memory I have with him. And yeah, I wanted to talk about him, so I look,、uh, looked into his、uh, history a little bit, and I found out、uh, he was born in 1917. It's almost 100 years、uh, since he was born. Of course, if he was alive, he would be 100 years old next year. That, that's a long, long time. And then,、uh, He was,、uh, he entered Budo Senmon Gakko, that's、uh, usually known as Busen, which is、uh, translated as Budo Vocational College.、Uh, that's tr- that translation is from the book Kendo Culture of the Sword by Alexander C. Bennett Sensei.、Uh, that's page 118. Okay, if you want to know. Okay, so he entered Budo、uh, Vocational uh, College, uh, that's Busan,、uh, when he was 19. And he received his ninth dan when he was 75, so which is 1992. I was about 18 or 19, I think. I was around there. And.、Uh, When I was 14, that was like, as, well, he, when I entered this dojo, Shubukan, when I was seven, he was just scary, scary looking old man. I didn't know who he was, of course. I just started Kendo. And he, he was already eighth dan, and I, doesn't mean anything to a seven year old kid. So, What's eight then? We don't know. So we're just an old man who looks scary, must be really good, kind of, you know, just scary, old, scary looking old man. And、uh, 
you just as you just do kendo, you kind of knew. You started knowing he must be really good, you know. And and then we found out that there there were, there is only ninth ninth nine dan in kendo. Um, of course, nine uh, nine dan now is uh, we don't have nine dan ninth dan. Or uh, uh, now, but back then we still had ninth dan, and eighth dan is really good. I found out uh, when I was like, yeah, probably 12, 10, 12 years old, and I was fourteen. And I remember, probably, yeah, I probably I was fourteen, and I was doing jigeko with them. I was, we were quite lucky to have eighth dan sensei, and later he get. He got ninth down, right? And of course, we kn- I knew already he is really good, and eighth down is really good. He was challenging ninth down. I think he was already challenging. I don't know. Maybe people were talking about him going for ninth down. But anyway, and I doing jigeko with him. I knew well. I knew already. I can't do anything. I know what he was going to do. He was going to receive my strikes and he just counterattack, you know. And I was like, I was like a grasshopper, you know, just striking, striking. And, you know, younger kids trying to try and go, you know, going crazy to strike. But anyway, and the first man strike, all I remember is this go, yeah. A lot of ki, and then you, I know, I he was gonna just counterattack, right? So I didn't think anything. I just going going crazy at the first ki, and then go bah, strike man. Okay, that was first man strike. And then next time I realize, okay, next time I I remember is Tsurumaru Sensei's head is in between my arms, right? My arms. I'm going for man. So his head was between my hands and my chest. So and I go, oops, I don't know what happened, but this can't be good. That's immediately I thought this can't be good. Okay. I didn't even know if I hit his man. I don't remember. I don't remember if I hit his man or not, but I went for his man straight. And next time I re- know is his head is right in front of me, and I go. I literally thought, "Oh, crap!" Right? I'm in big trouble. I don't know why I, s- I thought that, but and I let go his head, <laughs> and he looked at me, and I go. He smiled a little bit. He smiled a little bit. Right? It's not like smi- smiling. Oh, yeah, that was good or anything. It's got hmm. Okay. Now you know what's going to happen or something. And I thought, oh man, what's going to, what, what have I done? You know, but, uh, he, he looked like he was still smiling, but that was for the first time. Okay. I was there since I was seven, right? And he was my, uh, the headmaster since then, right? And for the first time, he started, he started coming towards me. Usually, those higher senses don't put pressure on you. He just goes, okay, come, come and strike me. And he just, they just do ojiwaza, which is counterattack. So he says, receive and strike, receive and strike. They try to, they let you strike more, okay? But for the first time, he came, came at me. So he just go coming forward towards me and then go, boom, strike. He started executing techniques on me. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just, you know, just all I could do was like going backwards. Or for, probably I uh, struck back a few times. Okay. But I, I just, I don't remember. And then all I remember was first man strike I executed. And then he smiled, smiled. Smiled at me, and he was trying to strike at me. And in one strike, uh, one strike. Uh, what I remember is, right, he cornered me. So there was a door behind me. Uh, it was not a door with glasses or anything, no windows or anything, just wooden door. 
And he was putting pressure on me. And I know he's coming. Right? I know he's coming. I know I, ca I can still remember he's lifting his hands up, right? Not small, tiny, fast main strike. I, he's lifting his hands up, up. And he's just coming right. It's just like his shinai is coming down on my head. I still remember that. And I go, wow. And I go, you can't, I couldn't do anything, I just couldn't move. I, I knew he was coming. It's like a big wave coming at you, and it go <laughs> swallows you, you know. And it's, a, it's all I remember is this. That's all I remember. So, and that experience was like, I think it, everything to me, I think, like, He's old. He was so when I was, I, I calculated how old he was. I think he was seventy years old when I was fourteen. He's seventy, old man, right? Grandpa, grandpa is coming and putting pressure on you, and I go whack like that. I go. If I mean, and I still remember that. And I still remember the pressure he gave me. I was young, but I knew he was coming. I couldn't move anything. It's just I, and then wonder how come, what happened there. I still searching the answer. I think one answer, not the answer. Searching something, and probably since then, I've been. Yeah, that was the experience of my, it's a, it's kind of backbone of my kendo, I think. And also the memory of, uh, the, the incident or technique I saw was, was like, oh man, he, he is like a, he's not, he's not a human, you know, he's a monster kind of technique. My sensei is, so he was, uh, the Tsurumaru sensei was the main instructor, and then he has more, uh, more younger instructors. Miyazaki Masayoshi sensei is my sensei, and he's still alive. And he was he was quite young back then. And I think he was. I got this as well. He was forty. Seven or 40, 45. It's really strong, same thumb, all right, young and fast. And Tsurumaru sensei is uh, around 70 or something, maybe uh, a little older, maybe 72, 73. And what I saw was maybe he wasn't even ninth nun yet. Miyana sensei try executed kotemen, tan tan, right? It consecutive, continuous kote menstrual, like that. And then what Mura, uh, Mura, Tsurumaru sensei did was, I, I don't remember in detail, but all I remember is he was receiving kote, a man, and let go his right hand, and with one hand, right, left hand only, and he got executed 100 men strike after his opponent executed kote and men, consecutive, tan, tan, and then and he was going pam, pam, tan, like that. So it was like split second, he got his man with one hand, and he's like over seventy years old. And I thought, okay, no wonder why no one can beat him. And the other another example was like. Uh, I think he already got, probably he was close to ninth down, right before maybe getting ninth down. And one time, uh, this was like extraordinary experience as well. We had another Shihan, the, another so my main instructor. So at my generation, Tsurumaru Sensei was there when I started Kendo when I was seven. And it's, uh, Muraema Sensei, uh, he, the late Muraema Sensei, he's, he was eighth dan Hanshi and he won all eighth dan tournaments. So he, he was really great, right? 
and he's also he was also the graduate uh, from Budo Semon Gakko, Budo Vocational College. And they they are ten years apart. So Tsurumaru Sensei was ten years older than Murayama Sensei. And for the first time, okay, uh, the dojo became silence. It's usually really loud, of course. I mean, more than 50 people. That was when I was already adult. So that was adult training. So after uh, kids training, we have adults training. And all of a sudden, uh, gradually, the, sh the sound of you know, Shinai and the Kiai just fades started fading now and people started sitting there and I was I didn't know what's going on and then I turned around and here they are Murayama sensei eighth non champion and Tsurumaru sensei almost ninth non they were doing Jigeiko right so lucky to I I have seen such great train. I mean, you can't really see those. I mean, that's that's ordinary training, not like Kyoto Taikai. You know, that's not it's not like martial arts festival or anything. Just ordinary training, and it's people start sitting, becoming quiet, and they go only two of them doing Chigeko. And I saw that. Murama Sensei was really strong. I mean, I'm going to talk about him uh, in this podcast, maybe after this episode. Uh, but Tsurumaru Sensei, one time I heard that you have to do Jigeko with, like, uh, no, one time I heard that, I, th I think from Miyazaki Sensei, I think, you have to do Jigeko, you have to do Keiko, uh, if you, uh, I think it's the uh, the words from Mochida Sensei Tenth Nan. If you do Jigeko with, uh, let's say Shodan, you have to be uh, you have to be better than him, but only 0.5 down above them. So if you're doing Jigeko with Shodan, maybe you have to be like 1.5 down. So they think. Uh, they can beat you almost. They can almost beat you, but they can't, right? If you're doing Jigeko with, let's say, third down, you, your kendo should be like 3.5 down. So they think you, they can almost beat you, but they can't. If you do that, you can encourage them. And then you go, hmm, why? I almost, I can almost beat him, but I can't just do it. Just a little more, you know? So it's like encouraging them. And that's how you should receive your students or your uh, juniors. So uh, they can improve quicker. Or, you know, this is one of the methods to, uh, to educate or to train your students. And I didn't think Tsurumaru Sensei could do that. Like when I we do when we do Jigeko with them, uh, you know they do all, all always counter attack. And it looks like he do, he does the same thing to me to seventh dan sensei to sixth dan sensei. You know he does he, he doesn't change his kendo at all. It's like everyone is like he treat everyone the same way. And he did that the same thing against eighth dan sensei, and not only eighth dan sensei. He became champion of the eighth dan tournaments twice at least. And I go, whoa! How come he can do it? Of course, you know, probably it's not as same as receiving me or receiving sixth dan or anything. But I go, it's just beyond. Our und my understandings, of course, back then I was only a teenager. I go, what's going on in you know with these old people? <laughs> so uh, I think that was really amazing. To I mean, I was lucky to see such kendo, and that's probably why I'm still searching some the way. Of the kindle, maybe I was really lucky, and I wanted to share this 
story with you so you knew you could at least know of course i mean there were there is a candle like that uh maybe there is candle like that still but it's hard to uh witness such candle and in daily basis so i wanted to share this story and then the one thing i wanted to share you know, i was 12 years old i think and then surumaru sensei was sitting in the in the teacher room and the teacher room is right next to i mean he was it was it was kind of part of the dojo and i was the I was the captain of the older elementary school uh, students, so I was sitting right you know, close to that uh, teacher room. And Tsurumaru sensei was sitting on the teacher room and he was stretching and stuff. And then I was getting ready to uh, training and I was waiting. And then he just said, Imafuji, my last name. Okay, Imafuji. And I go, Yes, hi. And do you know the difference between tsuyoi and umai? And tsuyoi is simply translated as strong, and umai is maybe skillful. And I say, uh, not really. And he goes, which one do you think is better, tsuyoi or umai? Um, maybe tsuyoi. And then he goes, right, tsuyoi is better. Tsuyoi is like this. You know, strong is like this. You just go, I'm going for men, I'm going for men. You put pressure and you 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 know you face to your opponent and you go, I'm going for men, I'm going for men. You're not saying this, right? But just going, I'm going to strike men. You kinda your body language is telling your opponent, I'm going for men. Okay, I'm going for men. When you, when you, when I, as soon as I see an, an opportunity, I'm going for men. Okay. And then you go, man. And you get it. That's strong. That's tsuyoi. But umai is, I'm going for men. I'm going, your body language is saying, I'm going for men. I'm going for, going for men. And then you go, you strike kote. He defines, he defined it that as umai. So since then, uh, my kendo is based on that. I'm going for me, I'm going for me, pow, strike me. I'm going for kote, I'm going for kote, kote. So, uh, you know, and then I talked to Miyazaki sensei, my sen you know, the, the seventh dance sensei, who was in charge of the kids back then. And I still talk to him uh, quite often. And I told him about that. And he goes, oh, yeah, so the previous one, going for men, going for men, and men, that's budo, you know, the martial arts or martial way. And going for men, going for men, and a kote is, is more like competition type. So it's going for kote is like going for, going for men, going for men, going for kote is like a going for point but you know if there is no clear cut there if you have to define what it is what maybe that but you need skill to become strong as well uh, at this moment as of 19 no, 20 as of 2016 i think it's a part of the you know strong being strong but again i'm searching the answer uh for that what it, what did he mean by that? You know, uh, still I am on that journey. So I don't know what you think, and probably you can find your own answers to those questions uh, it, through your kendo practice. But uh, I wanted to share my experience with you, and then keep what you thought about it. You know, keep it inside you. You can share that with me, but. Keep it inside you and then try to find out answers on your own. Because there is not one right answer, I guess. So that's the fun part of Kendo. You have to search your own answers to particular questions. And you might be right, you might be wrong. 
We never know, but that's the part of kendo, part of life, I think. I hope you like you. I hope you liked the story or me, my memories、uh, about the late Sumimoto Sensei, and hopefully,、uh, I will talk about the late Murayama Sensei as well. And please let me know what you want to hear or what you liked about the story. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening.